Okay, here we go. Finally, getting to making the dirt hole set. Now, you can use that little tool that I got to the left. Uh, it's called a groundhog uh, for making the hole. Or you can go to Lowe's and get you an auger that attaches to one of your drill motors like this. And this is how easy a dirt hole is. Get it nice and deep. Okay, um, I choose to make my holes on about a 45 and even sometimes a 60 degree angle to get the animal to come up and he's going to want to look straight down this hole. So he's going to come up and the hole is going down like this, okay? He's going to want to come up and look directly down that hole because that's where you're going to put your bait. Now my trap bed for a coyote, my trap bed is going to be back uh, about nine inches from the edge of this hole and then three inches offset to the right because they're right footed they're going to want to step on the use their right foot to step up and step down into it so my trap center of my trap my trap pan is going to be located right here about ten inches or nine inches back and three inches offset to the center. That's where the pan of my trap's gonna be. So right here is where my trap bed is gonna be located. And it's gonna be the lowest point, okay? He is, this, this ground's a little bit higher. This trap's gonna be sitting right there. He is gonna come up and he is gonna stand right here. So let me go ahead and start getting that made. I take this dirt and I put that dirt right there because what's going to happen with this dirt is this dirt is going to be sifted over top of my trap, okay? You can leave a little bit of it piled up on that side or whatever, but right here, I am going to, because I'm not going to let it be too obvious. Okay, so again, coming back nine inches and three inches offset, okay? Now you're gonna wanna dig this trap bed out the same size as your trap, all right? Don't make it too big, don't make it too small. But you want it the same size as your trap, okay? You're gonna take the dirt out of there, get it set like this. And I usually dig it down to where my trap sets about an inch deep okay and then my traps gonna set right in here my dog on my trap I take and turn away from where I think he's gonna come in and stand I turn it away on about a 45 I don't want him standing on that dog because I want him to stand right on the pan so location of the trap is also very key and important so here, as you can see, I don't have this uh, dug out real deep. It's about an inch to, sometimes you can go an inch and a half. That's fine. You just want your trap to, to bed down just below the surface because you're going to take and put peat moss in there. And uh, I put peat moss on the bottom this time of year and on the top of my trap because we have uh, lots of thawing and freezing, thawing and freezing this time of year. So my ears on my trap are going to stick out like this so I'm going to go ahead and dig the spot out for the ears on the trap when you put this trap in there and you bed that trap you want to be able to touch the jaw anywhere around that trap and that trap doesn't rock if that trap rocks that coyote's going to know that traps there and he's going to dig that trap up he's going to feel it he's going to dig it up you'll come here and your trap will be laying not even sprung off it'll be flipped over like this you know sometimes sometimes they spring it off but a lot of times they just dig it out and flip it over or dig it out and spring it off while they're digging it out so there again the type of um, the type of anchors I use are these this right here is called an earth anchor there's a bunch of different styles you can use I choose this style so go ahead and I like to put it in 
off the center of my trap like that. So, and then you just hammer her down in there. Get her all the way down in. It is important. I buy 15 inch ground anchors, 15 inch ground anchors for my um, coyotes. Okay, 15. And once you get that thing down in there nice and good, you wanna take and just jerk up on it once like that. What that does is uh, it seats that lever in there. So it's gonna be like this. Now, I'm gonna dig out just enough dirt to put my trap chain down inside, okay? That's all I want. I want just enough dirt to put my drop my trap chain down in there. So go ahead and get these this trap bedded real good. I'm talking about when I'm talking about bedding a trap. I got my dog over here, even though this particular style trap doesn't have much of a dog. I got my dog over here, away on this side. That'll be a little bit difficult to see. Now I'm going to put some of this dirt that I dug out of there back down in there. I want to get that trap bedded solid because when I'm done with this, you don't want that trap to rock at all, especially with coyotes. They will figure you out in a hurry if they can get that trap to move. So, very key. You want to be able to push on that trap anywhere around it and that trap don't move. You see that? That's what you want. Now I'm just going to fill some dirt in and get this ground a little more level. The lowest point in this trap bed is going to be right there. That's going to be the lowest point. That's what you want. You want the lowest point to be right where your pan's at. couple of different products on the market you can use. I just use either antifreeze flakes or this happens to be a powder. And this keeps the metal from freezing. All right. So I didn't use peat moss down on the bottom, but I am going to use peat moss right here. So, and I got my antifreeze on it. So no matter what happens in the next couple of days, it is going to wash a lot of that antifreeze off, but and down into the soil, but the soil is not going to freeze. Neither is this. This is peat moss, and you want to sift this stuff because what will happen is peat moss comes with um, big clumps of stuff like this in there, and you don't want that getting caught in your jaws. So get, go ahead and sift it and get most of the big stuff out. And that's what I got right here is mostly just the smaller stuff. Get your trap nice and covered now be careful that pan on there has been adjusted and that pan the tension on it is very light i am a little it may look like i'm not very cautious of it but i am i'm actually being quite cautious i've just done it enough to where i know about what i can get away with and uh there again i want the lowest point in this set to be where your pan's going to be. You see, I got that peat moss in there, and I'm pushing around the edges. I'm not pushing anywhere near that pan. Now I'm going to use this soil to sift over top of it, and then when we're done, we're going to blend this, all right? So let's go ahead and sift over top of it like this. Okay? Don't have to 
sift a whole lot. Remember, that is gonna crust over, okay? Now, I already got a big hole over there, so I'll just throw that dirt right in that hole. All right? So, that is gonna crust over, and it is gonna freeze a little bit. What we're gonna do is, now we're gonna worry about blending this. If I was doing what I like to call a dig out set, this is what I call, this is a dirt hole set. But what I, what a dig out set is like what we got over there where they just had tore it all up, okay? It's very eye appealing. Sometimes that is exactly what you need. Other times you want a little more subtle approach. So I'm gonna go subtle with this and see how it works. I'm more than likely, it's gonna work just fine. Sometimes you need that uh, very visual uh, trap bed or trap uh, set to, to get them to commit but okay we're going to just go ahead and kind of brush this in a little bit that's what we're using our broom for and what I was using my hand for a lot of times you just use your broom so we're going to get a little bit of the grass that's around here and we're going to trim it and set it in there basically that traps almost done and again my hole goes in right here on about a 60 degree angle then on the down hillside directly straight back and three inches offset is that pan and that's exactly what you want you can do something like this right here so you don't want to fence a coyote in and try to guard him in with anything really uh, tall or too obvious that you're trying to fence him in because he won't react the way you want him to in fact it most of the time will spook him there's that. I got a, uh, you can use something like this. this I got this at, uh, at Lowe's again, or Menards, excuse me, Menards. And I'm just gonna grab some weeds and then I'm gonna blend this set. As you can see, everything around here is green, so I'm gonna look for the greenest stuff. We got some right here, not too far away. In there. Just keep again, you know, I don't want to put it over top of my uh, low spot for my pan. So. that and that's pretty good as far as blending goes I blended it as about as much as I want so now what I've got is all I got to do is put some urine in there and I'm gonna put some uh, beaver meat down in the hole beaver meat is my choice every thing every predator out there eats the beaver so it's the best you can do so this set's pretty much done. Now all I have to do now is uh, I'm gonna put a little urine on my backstop here and I'm gonna put some beaver meat down that hole and uh, she'll be good to go. I do with my urine is I mix it 50 50 uh, fox urine with uh, glycerin and uh, the glycerin keeps it from freezing so it's like an antifreeze I put plenty of urine on that backstop now now remember too if you're gonna use gloves to touch your bait and your urines don't get the bait and urine on the glove because you're gonna be touching that trap you do not want your trap to smell like what you're trying to draw the kind of into. Okay, you do not want it to smell like that. Otherwise, he'll dig here. You don't want him to dig here. You want him to focus on what's in that hole. Okay, so we're gonna use beaver meat, then we're gonna put a little uh, sheep's wool down in there. Then we're gonna put, uh, maybe we'll put a little, uh, 
Now, we'll, in the next set over here on the other side, we're going to use gland glue for uh, caster gland for beaver caster down in the hole. But the sheep's wool over top of it, you can you don't have to use sheep's wool. You can basically use pillow stuffing, uh, polyfill that they stuff pillows with. You can buy it for like two dollars and fifty cents for a great big huge bag and uh, put it down in there. And then what that does is it gives him something when he pulls it out. He's gonna he's gonna dig at it and he's gonna pull it out. And uh, then he's got something to play with, and then he's going to go after the meat. The longer you can keep him in this set location, the better your chances are of catching that coyote. We will catch a coyote in this set. I'm positive of it. I've already been catching coyotes here, and I, you, I started out with the same type of set. I'll show you later on how to do a remake set after you do catch a coyote. So here's some beaver meat from uh, one I caught December of last year. So again, don't get it on your gloves. Use a stick, and uh, this is kind of frozen, so I'm gonna pour some of this blood down this hole too. That's good, it gets that scent down in there. So, get us a nice little piece of beaver meat here. It's kind of froze, but like I said, I'm gonna use two pieces of it. That hole is pretty deep, it's gonna take him a while to get that out. Actually, I'll use that. So it smells like there's plenty of bait in there. That's what we want. So I put bait down in the hole. I put urine on the backstop. Fox urine is my choice because when a coyote comes along, he thinks he's gonna steal something from a fox. That's the whole idea of this uh, dirt hole sets. They think they're stealing something here for a meal. this little bit of stuff down in there it also gives them some visual something to look at down in that hole they're like oh I can see it well they don't know that's not really it they can smell the meat down in there they can see that down in that hole and they're like oh yeah gives them a little visual every now and then especially this time of year I'll use something like feathers or even eggshells don't use that in the early part because you'll end up with possums sometimes skunks but you're gonna get non-target species. The whole idea of this set right here is to catch coyotes, not fox, not anything else. Fox aren't going for anything. I'm not even messing with the fox this year. We got so many coyotes, all I'm worried about is coyotes. We have absolutely no fawns on this property, none. So here's what she looks like. All right, you got your trap bed right there. And you got your hole. Right out here and just offset right there, you can see where the lowest spot is. It's right there. That's where he's at. Look down in that hole. You can see that there's something down in there. That's what we want. There again, that's uh, your basic dirt hole set. And hopefully in a day or so, I'll be able to show you how to do a remake. Uh, with the rain coming in, it'll probably be about four days. Uh, before they really work the set. I don't usually have good luck with catching the coyote the next day. They're a pretty cautious critter. They'll come in and check the sets, but committing, they usually don't commit. But you can. I have caught them the next day, but usually the rule is three to six days. Three to six days after I put a trap in the dirt, I start producing. And then after that, I can catch a coyote every day in that set if I do the remake correctly and the dispatch of the coyote correctly. I don't like to shoot them and have a lot of blood laying in there. It's very, uh, I believe, it's alarming to them. Some people don't. Some people say, oh, that blood doesn't bother them. They'll come right into it. Well, go ahead. You know, on a, on a slow year, most of the time I only have six traps in the dirt. Uh, and, and sometimes I have a few more, but most of the time I only have six traps in the dirt. And I catch coyotes. And I catch a lot of them. So, uh, with only having six traps in the dirt and averaging 25 to uh, 40 coyotes a year uh, in this short window that we have in Michigan to, to actually trap, I must be doing something that, that works. So you can shoot them in a set and leave blood all over if you want, and you might catch a couple, and I just don't have good luck with that. So, all right.